All right. We are live. We are good to go. So welcome to everyone on the call. This is really cool. Uh, everyone here is business owners, right? And everyone watching the recording is going to be some form of an online business owner. And so everyone's here because they're looking to learn the tactics, tools and strategies, some key tips about SEO and getting found online and making sure that they're seen, making sure their content actually gets out there and is making an impact. So Harry, uh, would you like me to read out a few things about you or would you like to sort of describe a few things about yourself and your story so that you can, uh, so that the people watching can get to know you? Either or, man. Um, I've got a few dot points on what is Studio Hawk and why the hell we think we can tell you about this thing, which I'm happy to go through. Otherwise, if, you, if you've got a spiel prepared, I wouldn't want to waste it. I don't have a, I don't have a specific spiel. All I know is, guys, he sent me slide deck a few days ago of his credentials, and it's just amazing. Just the list of what he's been able to accomplish at such a young age and what he's been able to build as a, as a platform is really, really inspiring. But I think it'd be more, uh, more powerful coming from, coming from you because you can tell us a bit more detail and a bit more, uh, bit more insight. So that would be cool if you give a bit of a summary of who you are and what you do and how you can help. Yeah, easy. Okay, so uh, my name is Harry Sanders. I've, um, well, I've won a few things. On, in the award side, I won the SEMrush Young Search Professional last year as well as six other nominations. Um, we're the largest dedicated SEO agency in Australia now, so we're the largest purely SEO specialist company. I sit on the board of the Australian Web Industry Association. Um, I've just opened an office in London and uh, I've recently just won uh, Media and Marketing Global Millennial of the Year, which is a pretty good one. So that was up in London. So I wasn't able to be there to get the award, but I hear it was pretty good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really do. I live and breathe SEO. I've been doing this for eight years now um, and I've been able to build up the company in that time. So got started when I was 14 and now I'm the ripe old age of 22 and we've got a team of um, about 15 here in Australia and another one in London and that's growing and we're on track to double over the next 12 months in Australia and uh, hopefully a bit more than double in London. Uh, I don't know if just growing one person is going to cut it, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> if anyone knows anyone in London, send them, send them Harry's way if they, can, if they can help. That's the best thing about these calls as well is that you can add Harry to your network, right? And, and you can start either getting to know him, adding value, but also sending people his way that, uh, that can add value and that can be either good partnerships or good collaborations. Mm. So that's a cool aspect of this call. So what we'll do at the end, Harry, is get you to put your Facebook link in the, uh, in the comments so people can add you and, uh, and get to know you and get to know a bit more about what you do, how you do it, and uh, who they can send your way. Yeah. Um, so that's what we'll do as well. But that's a huge, huge little, little snapshot of what you do, how you do it, and what your accomplishments have been. Uh, anything else you want to add that we should know? Um, um, <clears throat> mostly the purpose of this is to go through some of the, the more high level kind of, well, the enterprise end of clients that we've worked with. So the, the meccas, the office works, the good guys, those kind of clients we work with and showing you the lessons and insights that those companies take and bring them to a smaller playing field. Um, right. so that's what we want to go through. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I've read a bunch of clients that you work with in terms of New Balance and all the all the huge mm. uh, all the huge companies. And it seems like if you can take some tips of what the big people are doing and bring it down to the small level, if someone's in a team of you know three or five people or even solo entrepreneur like themselves, then you know you can learn from the best and you can start to you know have that mindset of when I do things around what the, the large companies are doing that'll start to set the platform for something big, right? Absolutely. So all the things that I'm covering off today are things that you can do. Awesome. Powerful. I think you just put yourself on mute. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So we had, um, we had a few people who are looking about SEO tips for beginners and things like that. Um, Melissa says SEO seems complicated, um, but she's, She's passionate to learn anything, so she's really cool. She's yeah. got she's got a good, a really cool YouTube channel. Uh, fifty six thousand people, so uh, fifty six thousand subscribers. So 
just keen to learn a bit more about that. But a lot of people are doing, you know, your regular posts, uh, some blogs, releasing videos, all that cool stuff. So, man, they're keen to hear what you have. And uh, and if I'm not mistaken, you said you'd like to share your screen. Is that right? To, to yeah. demonstrate. Awesome. No, I just got to figure out how to get that going. Um, I've got start video, but I think that's going to take my video. Yeah, so if you go down the bottom, there should be a share option. Do you see that? Ah, uh, yes, I do. There we go. Look at that. Amazing. <laughs> Who thought I'd teach something technical yeah. on this on this uh, on this call? I'm like the worst at this um, at getting this stuff going. All right, here we go. Can you see that? Yeah, beautiful. Fantastic. Well, I'm just going to run through this. Don't mind the, the name Lawrence Hitches. I totally stole his presentation. Um, nice. So who is Studio Hawk? So basically the things I kind of ran through, we are a specialized SEO agency, um, the largest of its kind in Australia, which is, um, which is interesting. And I'll, I'll kind of mention briefly why that's important. And the importance of that and why I pull that out is there's a lot of full service agencies. And if you ask a lot of people's experience with SEO, they generally, you know, a lot of them have got bad things to say. And I, I would know because I do a lot of work with the ACCC and every day I get complaints and it's about the same companies, but it's always about full service agencies. So agencies that say they can do everything right. And it's becoming increasingly larger problem. Um, that all these agencies are saying they can do websites, social media, your, you know, your SEO, your AdWords, you name it, they can do it. And the problem with a model like that is it, it's people can't be good at everything, right? You simply can't. And SEO and AdWords and even a lot of those things have become very intricate and very detailed kind of disciplines, um, which make them very difficult to know uh, across the board, even in a massive agency. So to give you some context on that, um, some of those brands that we work with, like the good guys, uh, or, or Officeworks is probably a better example. We, we just found out that we were shortlisted for the best SEO campaign in Australia with, with the work we did with Officeworks. Now, why, why that's interesting is because they had never historically had a specialized agency, ever. Uh, they'd always been using a media agency and if you've ever been in the pitch or working with one of these guys, essentially they give a budget. They say, here's a $300,000 budget a month in agency fees. I want you to put that to good use and um, make me money. Now, generally they just give that to one agency uh, and they've realized that that's over the past probably five years, that's starting to become decreasingly or worse and worse in, in its effectiveness. So for the first time we got appointed the office works account. Now, uh, normally an agency that would get appointed those kind of accounts is about 100, 150 staff strong, full service across the board. Your, your kind of Columbuses or your media comms if you've ever heard of those agencies. Um, so for us as a specialized, I mean, 15 person agency to be appointed that, it's pretty massive. Um, but the reason why big brands are starting to appoint specialists is because it's cheaper and more effective than appointing generalist full service agencies. And that's across the board. That's not just SEO. That's your AdWords, your web design. Um, so it's all about kind of finding those specialists that know what they do and they don't stray from their lane. Um, so that's the first kind of thing that I'll, I'll show from those big brands. So all these Brands, you know, Mofo, Mecca, Good Guys, Officeworks, New Balance, Quest, all the brands we're working with, they've all appointed a specialized agency, i.e. us, to do that work uh, and appointed other people elsewhere. And uh, a lot of small businesses that work with us do the same, but some are still desperately clinging on to that hope of finding one agency to do everything. Um, but like I said, as my, with my work, the ACCC, they are always the companies that get complained about. So if you've done SEO or AdWords in the past, but you've used a full service agency, forget what you know, forget that experience. And I'll take you through the journey of, of what, it, of what real SEO looks like. <coughs> awesome. Yeah, it sounds good. If, uh, I guess everyone here is keen to understand a bit more about the, you know, what they can, what they can take from those, from your journey and, and what they can, what they can apply and some, some tips they can take away. That'd be cool. Absolutely. So um, I'll really quickly cover off what is SEO. I'm sure most of you know, so I'll kind of glaze through it, but 93% of online activity begins with search, 
right? And that's a staggering stat because 43% of people click on that first result, 20% the second, 13% the third, and so on down to like 1%. Now you might be thinking, well, AdWords is at the top there. But every year, the number of people that click on ads decreases. Uh, when it launched, it was about 43%. As of today, at this date, it's about 16% of people click on the ads and the vast majority click straight through the ads. They skip the ads altogether. Uh, and that's just a human psychology thing. We hate being sold to. And SEO is, funnily enough, one of the only channels um, that feels completely natural to a person engaging with your brand. So conversion rate is three times higher uh, than any other digital channel. Um, just because people don't feel sold to. Um, it's, it's one of those really kind of, um, I think untapped um, opportunities. So what I'm talking about here is keyword, paid search, organic results. So that gives you all the background you need to know. Now let's dive into the real stuff. Um, now the stuff we're going to be talking about may start off and, and seem very simple at the beginning, but it's important that we cover off the fundamentals because SEO without knowing your strong fundamentals is meaningless. And there's a lot of confusion around what are the fundamentals of search and how it works. So uh, unfortunately Google doesn't quite work like this where you just pray in a circle to the Google gods and hope for the best. Damn. That's obviously reserved for Wednesdays. You can't do that every day. Um, but you've got your three main pillars here. So on-page SEO is your titles, your heading structure, your meta description. So uh, anything on the website, anything that you can change on the website is an on-page SEO. So I like to use the analogy of a house. Your on-page SEO is the kind of fundamentals, the interior, everything that, that's got to do with the structural of that house. Yeah. Um, and that covers off also the technical SEO, which is um, that kind of uh, those core kind of speed and security items, as well as the content that's on a page. Um, there's also um, some information about offsite SEO. So getting other people to link to your website and acquiring those backlinks. And I'm more than happy to talk about that, but um, that topic is uh, in itself a whole rabbit hole to go down. And there's heaps of different techniques and different ways of doing it. Um, happy to talk about it, but, but for now, I'll cover off kind of things that you can do that are kind of quick wins rather than things like offsite SEO, which you might be doing for a year and um, you know, only then starting to see results. Yeah, I think, I think what, I think what most people who are going to be watching this live and the recording are uh, looking for, yeah, things they can put on their website or tips, tips for their website or tips for their, their blogs or tips for their, their content um, that's going to allow it to be seen more. So that's cool. So I think people can have a look there and see the difference between on-page technical and content SEO. I think that's, that's powerful as well. Absolutely. So we'll cover that off and what each of those means. So the other thing with content SEO is that also covers off search intent. So search intent is basically making sure that whatever a user searches, the intent of your page matches that search. Now it seems super obvious, but it's often something I see forgotten a lot um, that people are typing in a keyword and wondering why it is that no one is converting on their page. Um, so remember that you've got to be matching the intent of the search, but I'll go into that in a little bit. So this is on page SEO. Now this looks confusing and daunting, but it's actually very, very simple. It's just a, a bunch of nice colorful blocks. So uh, basically the structure of any web page should be something like this. Um, and Google reads a page top to bottom, just like a user does. But the biggest thing is gonna be that title tag at the top. So the title tag is what comes up in the search results whenever you search something. And that title tag dictates what Google thinks your web page is relevant for. So the first tip I'll say is most businesses tuning into this will look at their title tag on their website and it's probably um, not optimized in any way whatsoever. So an optimized title tag um, instead of, so there's two kind of examples of what that can look like. So I'm talking about, in, in, currently it says a new tab, but it will load up the website here. 
They will say Studio Hawk Award winning SEO specialist based in Melbourne. Now that's our title tag. If I go to our about page, it'll say about Studio Hawk. Now, what will happen is you'll find that a lot of businesses out there just have like on their home page the title tag will just say home uh, and that's obviously not what you want at all and in fact that title tag alone can shift rankings right so that's the exact tag i'm talking about there and all the things that cascade below it but many many times that's you wouldn't believe how many times we're doing audits on these sites and all we see is something like this and it looks exactly like that uh, more like that and it just says home now when someone's searching for an seo specialist in melbourne or an seo person and they just see home in the search results it doesn't give them a vote of confidence to click through to your listing when everyone else in the search results has got a proper title tag also, from Google's perspective, if you don't have the kind of general broad keywords in that title tag, they just won't put you anywhere, right? So that home, if I change that one title tag, you can expect like an increase of 34%. So you literally can just go to your website now, everyone on the call and just check um, on your website what comes up here and what comes up when you go to about or services or anything like that. Those are all key kind of title tags that will make a difference in where you're ranking. Um, and it's not to be understated. This is something that seems so obvious and is so easy to fix, but can often be the difference between, you know, position 12 and position six, or even position five and position one, something as simple as tweaking and optimizing that title tag. Um, awesome. And we spend a lot of time with big brands getting those title tags right because the more on um, the intent of that search, the more it matches that intent, the better off you're going to be from both a click-through perspective, but also from a ranking perspective. So that was a really basic one, but something that a lot of people could be doing much better. And so what would you recommend? So if someone has their website, what would you, would you recommend they have the position of their ideal client and understanding the intent of what they're going to their site for and then you know, customizing that title tag accordingly? Absolutely. So if you really want to get sophisticated, you can pull up a tool like SEMrush, which will give you a bit of a rundown. So um, you can get a free trial on this tool. Uh, it's called SEMrush, S-E-M-R-U-S-H. Uh, and you can pull up what we call a domain overview. And that'll give you an idea of the traffic and the kind of keywords people are coming through. So no surprise, people are looking for SEO specialists. So in my title tag, I say SEO specialist. Gotcha. And that matches up that search intent very nicely over there. Um, and also you'll notice that it helps with other terms that we call LSIs. Now LSI is a, what we call a latent semantic, or latent semantic indexing. Really, really fancy way of saying Google likes to use synonyms. Um, so they love to use cool, complex jargon and us SEO people like it too but really it boils down to just synonyms. So SEO specialist, SEO expert, Google sees these two things as identical kind of keywords or close to. So the, the mere act of using SEO specialist in my title has also granted me the ability to rank for SEO expert, mm. um, which is great because that cost per click is about $110 per click normally. Um, so you get an idea of just, just an organic position can be worth so much in AdWords. So you can save so much money just by fixing those title tags. Awesome. Does that help guys? Maybe type in the chat box, see if that, if you're willing to, if you're willing to dive in deep and, and test that out and see if you can optimize your page for something like that. That'd be cool. Harry. Yeah. You could, you got some cool stuff going on. So let's, uh, <laughs> yeah cool so and then it kind of flows down to your heading so the heading on a page which is like this um, which is something exactly like Australia's large dedicated SEO specialist and then what we call a h2 so you just kind of flow down through heading lower heading and then paragraph and then the entire time you just want to be putting in exactly like this heading lower heading paragraph have some images in between I've got an image there um, and just kind of talk about what you do it's no different to how you normally structure a page, but this is exactly how Google wants to see it done. And you can see 
examples of that on, on our website, exactly how we've structured that and the, the wording we've used. Great, awesome. Um, yeah, I, could even, I could even put in some links um, to your site if people want to look at that just as a bit of an example. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm more than happy to distribute some of these slides as well. So here, here's some more examples of that kind of title tag. So here's um, Scanlon Carroll, which is just a random example. And then it's just got home there. It doesn't describe at all what that is. It describes a business, but it doesn't describe what the business does. So a much better title tag for this would be Scanlon Carroll Business Lawyers in Melbourne. And unsurprisingly, you would find that you start ranking for business lawyers in Melbourne, which I'm sure is a great um, channel for Scanlon Carroll. Right? I'm sure they would love to be doing that. They're just not quite sure how to do that from an SEO perspective. Um, and here's an example of a title tag that's been over-optimized. Like they've tried a little too hard on it and they've put too much. So mortgage broker, Archer Mortgage Group, Blackburn Melbourne. Always start with the brand at the start. So Archer Mortgage Bro uh, Group and it should be Mortgage Brokers in Melbourne, right? Keep it shorter, but always start with that brand at the beginning of your homepage. Every other page, swap the two around so that this is at the start and the brand is at the end. But for your homepage, it is essential that your brand is at the start. Um, so they typically display the first 50 to 60 um, characters in that title tag. Um, but it's so important because it really does. It's, mo it's the most important on-page SEO factor, and it's probably the most overlooked on-page factor because people think it's too easy to make a difference, and it's, it's, it's really it's mind-boggling, Tyson, but, but it works. I, trust me, if you try this, you'll, you'll notice an immediate difference. Powerful. Um, so even just like here's some more examples of kind of optimized ones. So based on these keywords, here's what we've done and the keywords of FOMO 2020, which is uh, one of our clients. Uh, we kind of look at what, a, what, have, what keywords have a lot of searches. So exactly what you mentioned, what are your customers looking for? And you can use a tool like SEMrush to do that. And then just placing those in the title tags. Um, and you find that you will do pretty well from it. So um, the next is an SSL certificate. Now, I'm not sure if everyone's covered this off or not, but I still see it out in the wild. Um, now, two parts of this, the reason why I'm bringing this up, and I'm sure a lot of people have covered it off, is Google's about to roll out an update so that any website that now has non-secure or not secure on it, rather than using an SSL which is secured, is gonna have a massive screen that pops up when you click on the page saying, warning, this page is not secure, proceed at your own risk. And then a user's gonna to have to click that proceed at own risk button. Now that's gonna kill your conversion rate, it's also gonna kill your SEO. Um, so it's really simple to put one of these SSL certificates on, you can chat to your hosting person or your web developer and they can do it in about 20 minutes. Um, but really something to fine tune, especially as Google basically, uh, well, is about to basically lock out websites that don't have it. So this is kind of a final warning kind of thing there. Um, a massive one that I think we spend about 40% of our time with our enterprise kind of clients is speed. Um, how fast that website loads. And there's a lot of different ways of doing it. Amazon did a study on their website and they found for each 0.1 second that the website took to load, it cost them about 7% in bounce rate, which was equivalent to about $32 million in sales for them. 0.1 of a second. That's crazy. <laughs> so obviously we're not all Amazons here. Um, we're, we're working up to it, but it, it goes to show uh, if those big brands are thinking about it, you guys should too, because big brands have a massive problem and that is their website is super, super bloated, right? It is all over the place. It's like, uh, if I told you the amount of um, variations and uh, content management systems, office works on it, it's, it's in the thirties. Uh, there's 30 different CMSs that they're running on. So normally you'd have your website on WordPress or Shopify or something. No, they're, they're running on 30 different ones. So it makes it super hard for them to, to do things like optimizing that speed. But for a smaller business, there's every opportunity to beat them on page speed. Uh, as much as we do work with those big enterprises in the channel, we also work with SMEs. And one of the biggest ways we beat big enterprises is by being more agile by being able to fix more issues, by able to having 
the fast loading website, we're able to meet massive brands. Um, we, we recently, another campaign we got nominated for in the 2019 Sam Rush Awards was Police Check Express. And we beat uh, the ATO in their rankings, the Australian Taxation Office. Uh, just because their website was so bloated and so slow and wasn't adhering to these things that we were able to beat them for the terms around getting these checks done. Uh, so it can be done, guys. It really can. It's just about how you structure it. So there's two main ways of, of fixing speed. One is um, reducing the size of your images. And you can do a page speed check like... Um, or Google page feed is probably the best one. Just cover off the kind of suggestions it comes back with. Uh, and the best tip I can give you there is if the biggest factor it comes back with and it says your TTFB or your time to first byte is too long, that essentially means your web hosting is too slow. So it's a really confusing way of saying it and they don't say it directly because there's a lot of other factors to it generally. But a fast way of beating that TTFB is to get faster hosting. So to use a platform like Manage WP or even Venture IP or, or something like that, which is a dedicated or more um, costly oftentimes host that is going to be a lot faster. So a lot of people are using GoDaddy and the like, and that's great when you're getting started out. But as you start to want to rank higher and see more fine tuning in the business, then you definitely want to want to consider kind of specialized or dedicated hosting. Uh, and that'll fix a lot of that for you. Um, another big one is service pages, right? Unsurprisingly, it's service pages. But a lot of people aren't doing these properly. Um, if you look at the top search results for any, any query, really, if you're looking for a service, it's, generally comes back with service pages. Um, so these are pages, they really give you an opportunity to expand upon a particular service or something you're doing. So in this case, natu naturopath, um, to talk about what that is, what it treats and how it works. It's an informational kind of hub. It's not necessarily a direct way of pushing what you do, but a way of giving some information about it. Now you can rank really high just by matching the search intent of people looking for that. So by matching when people are searching for naturopathy with your service pages, you capture a heap of direct traffic. Uh, and the more fine tuned and more granular you can be about this, the more and more people that you will attract. Um, and it's a really simple one too. You've just got to flesh out your pages. I recommend about 600 words and an image on each service page or each page you're hoping to get people to find through search and make a transaction on search from. Great. So what you're saying, cause a lot of people here and watching the recording will be people who offer services of some mm -hmm. sort. A lot of them are doing uh, business consulting and things like that. Um, yeah. And so you're saying on their service pages is a really, really key opportunity to put in those, keywords and, and really picture the intent of that ideal client so that you can put it in there mixed in with about 600 words and, and one photo. Is that correct? Absolutely. So just make the paid read super awesome. Make it yeah. kick ass, right? Make it like something you'd want to read. If you wanted to know more about naturopathy or whatever your business service does, make it so that that page is the source you want to go to. Um, talks about it. I wouldn't even, you, you know, you talk, obviously put yourself in the frame of what your ideal kind of prospect or client would be searching for and cater around that. But don't worry too much about the keywords on that page. One, one thing that I haven't really gone into too much yet is, is keywords and the whole notion and conception of them. There's, there's, uh, there's a massive notion and conception around keywords that stems from about four or five years ago where SEO was all about just putting your keywords on a page. Uh, and that's evolved and changed over time. I mean, some of you might be familiar with the, the term of two to three percent keyword density on a website, but most of that is rubbish at this point, right? Since Google's moved to a more machine learning or an LSI kind of methodology, it doesn't look at that keyword density so much. It looks at how well that content reads, what that content is about, the topical nature, and what search terms someone might look for to find that page. Awesome. So make it read really nicely, um, even at the cost of not including 
the coolest keyword you would have liked to um, because that's totally okay. Cool. So just make it kick ass, all right? Make it kick ass. Make it that's awesome it. and kick ass. And that's the, uh, that's the way to go. That's it. So the more, the better you structure the things using those things like title tags and headings that I mentioned earlier, all you've really got to do is make these pages and the content side of things as kick ass as possible and you'll start ranking. Um, you know, if you really want to boost that, you can obviously do things like offsite SEO, but again, um, whole different ball game. Happy to send through some material for reading if, if people want to look at what that is a bit more. Um, but, but yeah, real, a real, um, real game changer if you can get this stuff right. Um, the other one is a blog. Now, a lot of people are doing blogs now and that's really cool. Um, everyone should have a blog post going out a month. Everyone at the minimum should be having one going out a month for two reasons, right? Number one, it makes you look like an expert. Google themselves said in the manual search evaluation guideline paper of 2017 that anyone with a blog is considered an industry expert in Google's eyes. That's a pretty good thing, right? You want to be considered an industry expert because that's when they show you for more search results. Um, so that really hasn't changed. By blogging once a month, you are creating this content hub of expertise on your site, under your brand, um, which is absolutely pivotal. So a lot, another question people ask me is, oh, will I post to LinkedIn? Should I post to LinkedIn and then to my blog? No, you should always post under your blog first because it's mm -hmm. the first um, part. And if you're posting it everywhere else and then your blog, Google can sometimes see there's duplicate content and actually penalize you for it because I think you're stealing the blog, right? You can't steal people's content, you have to write it yourself because Google's constantly checking everything on the web internet to see if that's been plagiarized or not. So they only really want original sources. Yeah. Um, but having that blog post a month, it makes you look like the expert. But the other thing is, and also you'd be surprised how many people will read it and convert from it. Um, so what I've included on the right is, 1% um, of users will convert in the blog, which look, not a good ratio. But in this case, the person that they converted was a $240,000 a year client um, from one conversion on a blog they had about what are transferable skills. Super weird, right? And you never think that that would be a massive thing. But this person's obviously been on the internet and they're desperately searching for transferable skills and a guide. And this person has put together a definitive guide on transferable um, skills, not only positioning their website as an expert, but also directly converting people and prospective clients from nowhere into paying people that have come through the website. Um, I'm always shocked by how many people we get through our own blog. Um, every time we do a new post, we get a ton of people reaching out to us um, about what we do and how we do it and what we can provide. And we published one on, uh, I remember, on small businesses and how, how um, uh, small business SEO is changing. And I remember waking up to about 26 different leads in my inbox that morning, just from people looking into that. Um, because it, because it, it states things that you don't normally state, right? Like, I don't normally talk about the price point of the SEO stuff we do. Um, you know, it just doesn't come up. But as soon as we include it in a post like that and we say, well, we're doing stuff from, you know, $500 or $1,000 a month, people just go, oh, wow, I just assumed that this is completely unaffordable. Um, and so you capture those people that you wouldn't have otherwise captured all the while positioning yourself as an expert. So once a month, 600 words. And the best tip I can give you around that is to go to a tool like SEMrush again, and they've got really, really good tools around gap analysis, around finding keyword gaps, or also just doing general, um, keyword research, um, around, what to look for. So you can look at keyword kind of analytics or keyword magic tool uh, once you pull this up and it will give you, uh, it'll look at your domain and kind of figure out what are some really good um, LSI or related keywords that you could talk about. So this is really good for, for covering off things like if you wanted to 
for instance, find a new blog topic, right? So a lot of us are shooting in the dark. And one thing we do a lot for our clients and, and especially big brands is we tell them what to write about. So we tell them based on the data we find here. So we might look into, uh, for, for a brand, we would look into what they do, what's emerging, what's trending in the market and develop content pieces around that using keyword data as a metric rather than just shooting blindly. So we might look at, um, you know, let's say laptop, or let, let's say iPad, that's a, that's a cool one. If we look at the keyword of iPad, we're looking at the Australian database here. We can see how many people are searching for it each month, 90,500 people, and also a trend of what's going on with the iPad search. Is it trending up? Is it trending down? Are people less interested in iPads? What a variation of iPads that people would look at. So there's 22,000 searches for Apple iPad or Apple iPad price or 50 people in Australia a month as for some reason searching for Apple iPad, Apple iPad. Um, you know, it, it, it boggles my mind and there's no one bidding on that term, right? So if you're an AdWords person, you might go, well, perfect. I'm going to place a bid on that because I'm going to capture 50 um, people that might be searching for that. And then you can also look at that keyword magic tool, um, which will really, sorry, my slack's just blowing up, which will really like help you see all the different variations of what that might look like. Um, so you can see the mini, the two, the air, the app, Apple, and just all the different variations as Officeworks represent over there um, that you can go through and see what people are looking for, repair, split screen, and you can get an idea of what to write about. Instagram mm -hmm. for iPad, there's so many things here that you could really um, talk about or write about here and go through this side column and just get an idea of um, different concepts or different topics to go through. Um, even so even if that just generates the ideas, right? The ideas of what you can talk about and then see if those ideas, you know, are a gap that, that you could fill. Absolutely. Um, you know, that would be, that would be key. And so that not only describes, you know, that you can release a blog topic that Google see as the expert, but you can also add in the, the topics. You can also add in and see what, what's going to, uh, you know, what's going to rank well and what your clients are looking for, what your prospects are looking for. Absolutely. That will give you, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Correct. And it kind of can govern the rest of your marketing as well, because if you know people are searching for Apple iPad or variants of that or stand or whatever it may be around that term, you can, you can change that or you can filter by question. You can start looking at questions, how to reset an iPad, how to delete apps on an iPad. Mm. You can really go through, you can even look at something like business coaching and look at all the questions that people have around business coaching. So the trend of career coaching or how to start life coaching or why business coaching is important, how to scale, how to scale all these questions that you could be addressing and capturing search volume for right now, right? Um, and that's a really, really cool thing. You don't need to guess what people are looking for. You can tell backed on trend and volume and difficulty. And that's what smart people use to write their blogs. And you can do it, you know, these, these tools have got a free trial and there's a bunch of different ones and, um, you can really know what to write about before you know, like, you know, SEO agency questions or um, anything like that. It really helps dictate what, what you should be focused around. That's cool. So even if you're in the industry of business coaching or doing some sort of business consulting, even in areas of um, real estate or whatever it may be, you can look up the key terms, you can look up the key questions that people are asking and then put that on your blog or put that on your site and make sure that when people are going to they're, they're getting the value from it. Correct. And so look as a, as a key kind of look at takeaways, if we go from top to bottom, you'll, you'll see it all kind of comes together at the end here. We fix our title tag. We make sure that our website's secure and we have the right content and we're matching that search intent by relevant niche topics by looking at that search volume. So you kind of meet it from end to end. First, we find what people are looking for. Then we cater that blog post around what they're doing. We make sure that our website is optimized and has security and loads fast. 
But then we also make sure that we're matching that, that search intent with that title tag. That is like an end-to-end -end journey. This is almost like a checklist of what we would do on every page we work with on a, on a big brand. And these are the things they're doing. They're all looking at data to dictate what they're writing about or what to use in their content. And then they're targeting and tailoring everything else around that. And that's the best thing that you could take away to a small business. You don't need to think that these tools are big enterprise things or you know, you can't do these kind of things. It's super easy. I just showed you exactly how I would do it for business coaching or uh, if I was writing a, a blog post about iPads or something. It's something that you can do and incrementally these will like um, boost your traffic. Um, in fact, sometimes not even incrementally. We've, we've implemented these kind of sim relatively simple things and seen massive surges in a month, two months in a lot of cases. Um, from here, if you're kind of looking at this and you're, you're, you've gone through this and in two months time, you've actioned all these things and looked through your website, you might want to look at considering that a backlink side of things. But like I said, it's, that's kind of the next step. That's almost boosting what you're already doing around here. There's no point in building links if you haven't got this covered off. Building links is the next part uh, on top of this, but that's where it really gets advanced and that's where my love of SEO really comes from. I think this will really help help everyone. This is really cool. And not only the small tips that you can, that can make a big difference that you can implement now, um, but even if things are complicated, that just means even more reason to add Harry to your, to your network, right? To just be in contact and see how you can add value, see who you can send his way and vice versa. And really just, um, just adding these people to your network will give you, you know, a reference point if you have any quick questions or anything like that. So, if you could, Harry, just uh, in the chat box, put if you could put a link to your um, put a link to your site or a link to your uh, Facebook page or something like that, so people can add you. Um, yeah, that would be cool. Um, and guys, I'm going to post in the group um, as always. I'll put I'm posting now uh, just to just to ask about what your key takeaways were. So if you could add, go to the Facebook group, connect, contribute collaborate and if you could just comment on there and, and let harry know first of all thanks so much for your time but also to see uh, also to know what your biggest takeaway was from here um that'll get a really cool thing going in terms of moving forward and, and giving some uh key tips and and things like that so is there anything else maybe if someone has a quick question we have about seven minutes if uh or eight minutes if anyone wants to ask Harry any specific questions, um, then that would be cool as well. Yeah, happy to go through anything, guys. Just even if it just seems so simple, I mean, they're, they're often the questions that we can be scared to ask. Um, but, but feel free to go through anything and, you know, reach out. We're also building a learning center, which we're launching in about February, um, which is actually basically everything I covered off and a lot of other things and tweaks are done in two to three minute videos. Uh, which you can kind of filter through. Now, I know that's not being launched for a long time. Turns out these learning centers are hard to develop and take a lot of time. But, but yeah, more than happy to share that through. Very cool. So, Regina says this is very helpful. Awesome. Someone recently said that uh, SEO is more successful with longer posts. Can you compare 600 word post to longer that's 1100? um in terms of seo advantages mm. that is a really good question uh, my general manager is currently writing a white paper around that exact exact issue um, or exact um dilemma now uh to answer it simply to give you kind of tldr if your topic is longer in nature you will need a longer post to cover it so if you're if you're writing a definitive guide on seo and everything around it you're going to need about eleven thousand words if you try and cover that off in 600 Google's going to think you're a fool um, and it's not going to rank that for you. If, however, you're talking about natural therapy or a service offering that you have on your page, you should keep that to 600. Or even a blog post that is just, you know, um, for instance, some of those kind of posts or kind of keyword tools like what is business coaching definition? Well, you could probably cover that off in six to 800 words. Um, probably not something you need to expand too much on 
Um, so it's just about knowing um, exactly what the term is and why it is that people want to hear about that. That's cool. Yeah, I guess you can always just see, okay, how is the people of the who's reading the blog post getting the most value? If it's something they can take away, uh, that's a snapshot that's quick and fast and they get what they need, uh, then that's all, you know, then that would be to their advantage. But then if there is some detail that needs to be in there and there, and the person's looking for something like a more detailed description, then they're going to get what they want. They're going to get what they need by a longer post. Is that what you're saying, Harry? Exactly right. And Google, Google sees it the same way. If you can answer the question in a short and concise 600 words, um, they're not going to be super thrilled if you try and answer that in 3,000. Because yeah. imagine coming to a page and just scanning through the post to find what you're looking for when you can go somewhere else and see it answered in a quick, succinct manner. Wow, gotcha. Yeah, hopefully that helps, Regina. Uh, that's a really good question. I was, I was, uh, that helps me as well because I'm going to start doing more blog posts. Uh, but that's cool, man. Thanks for that, Harry. Every, everyone uh, can see the links that are in the chat, so you can add him, go to the, the his site or anything like that if you need to have any more questions. Um, Harry, just quickly, who can people send your way that would be an ideal client or a key source of collaboration for you? Just so people know. Um, we're really looking for professional service or e-commerce people at the moment. Um, so we're looking for that, um, not so much enterprise end. I think we've got that covered off, but we're looking for SMEs. So people that have been burned by SEO before, ideally they've got maybe three, four staff. Um, they're getting a few leads through SEO, but they're wanting to take that to the next level. They're the people we can really help or the people that have been working with a full service agency and aren't quite thrilled or can't track the results. We do a heap of work around call tracking and actually um, showing you, like I showed you in that example, how many people are coming through from where and definitively telling you they're coming through SEO. Um, so we can help boost that. It is really hard for us to create that from, from nothing. Though. It's a lot like in a business, like if I said to you, I can improve your revenue by 10%, if you're a multi-million dollar company, that's amazing. If you're only doing $10 a month, that's not that great. Um, so it's about finding people that have got a few leads already and are wanting to take that to the next level. And they're the kind of people we can really help. Okay, amazing. I'll, I can talk to you either later today or sometime this week because I think I have something that, I think I have some people that may be able to help and an opportunity you might want to jump on. Um, you, when you put the links, you put only to the panelists. So I got it. Oh, uh, sorry. I, I, I re I reposted. I I uh, sent the links to oh, everyone. Else. Everyone's like, "Where the hell is it?" <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. Cool. So, call to actions, guys. Add Harry. Obviously, the wealth of experience and knowledge is is super key if you're growing online. Um, so, add him. Ask him. Continue to ask him who who you can send his way, or even if you have someone in mind, and say, "Look, this person may be needing your help, or maybe a good source of collaboration, something like that." Ask him, see, see if it's a good fit. And then I'll see you guys in the Facebook group. It'll be cool to be able to see what uh, what your key takeaways were. Here's the post. Let's jump on there. And um, and that would be awesome. So very cool, my man. I know you need to jot off, but man, thanks so much for your time. This is really, you, really cool. And it really helps to, uh, to learn this sort of stuff. I know it can go over everyone's head a lot of the times, but there's some cool action steps that people can take right now to get awesome results. So thanks so much, man. Right. Now, thanks for having me. Um, thanks for having me on. And any questions you guys have, shoot me through a message. Um, it's, uh, I, look, I really do love this stuff. I'm more than happy to answer these questions off and um, just see where I can help out. Beautiful. Beautiful. Awesome. Thanks so much, Harry. Thanks, I'll see you man. in the group, guys. Take care. Cheers. Thanks, have guys. Have a good day.